shit's horrible. It's horrible. Horrible. Yeah. I'm taking that. What's up you guys and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here my name is Heather and I'm a travel enthusiast. I love going to Mexico especially to the all-inclusive resorts. You can get so much bang for your buck here so I love to take you guys along these trips with me so you can get a real feel of these resorts and see if it's worth your hard-earned money. Sometimes they're good sometimes they're not so good so I'm here to help you figure out where to go on your next vacation. And I love doing these vlogs for you guys. So consider subscribing and let's jump into the latest resort I just traveled to. So this time we chose to travel to the Valentin Imperial Maya. This resort claims to be five star and describes itself as a new definition to paradise. The Valentin Imperial is located just 25 minutes from the Cancun airport. A couple of its popular features are the enormous pools that they have surrounded by lush vegetation, their food choices, and the half a mile stretch of white sand beach. This property is on the midsize, I would say, with around 540 rooms. It doesn't take too long to navigate. It's a very, very quick trip from the airport. This time we used Canada transfers. We love using them. They're probably our favorite airport uh, transportation that we choose to do it's always private so I'm gonna go through the check-in process I'm gonna review this whole entire resort for you guys from the food the pools the beach the entertainment and everything in between so if this sounds like your type of video then definitely stay tuned so let's start with the check-in now we typically like to get to our resorts as early as possible so we can have the entire day to enjoy they first start out by getting our luggage and putting it in secure space they are enhancing COVID protocols. Now on our last trip, they did not do temperature checks or sanitizing when you walk in with your feet like Valentine is doing here. So just like to share those type of things with you guys so you know what to expect. I will say the decor of this resort was definitely different than what we are used to normally seeing. In like it's more French, Italian, Mediterranean with still that Mexican culture feel to it. Just very fancy. We did get welcome drinks, check-in didn't take long, and then we changed into our bathing suits and headed right to breakfast. So now let's start breaking down this resort. I always like to start with pools because we're spending 80, 90% of our time at the pool. So they're very important to me when looking at a resort to book. I loved these pools. They were nice and open and spread out and just enough room for if it's super crowded. I never felt like we were on top of each other other than when they got to the pool parties. We'll talk about that in just a second. The one downside I will say is the seating was plentiful here. Tons of seating, but not very much covered seating. To get the bolly beds and more of the covered sections, you have to upgrade to. They do have a few free chairs that you don't have to pay for, but they go quick. So it's very hard to get out of the sun. That is my only little negative I want to say. Other than that, it was amazing vibes here. We loved it. They had exercise classes in the morning. They had two giant pool bars. So I never felt like we were waiting too long for a drink. That's always a plus. The whole entire resort is very well decorated. Even the bathrooms, I really loved. I'm just gonna show you, this might be a little weird, but the bathrooms were super nice, which is important to me. I don't wanna go in a nasty pool bathroom. So they were always clean. You can even buy sunscreens, pool floaties, hats. I mean, you can see everything that they have here right next to the pool. They did have some entertainment.
So obviously the phone parties were fantastic. We loved it. We've never really had a phone party this hyped up, this energetic. I, I'm kind of sad they only do it on Sundays. I feel like they need to be doing this more, but I'm sure it's a lot to put on. But it was amazing. It was great. Make sure you plan your trip on a Sunday so you can experience it. And the entertainment staff was great. I love the violin. There's my husband making balloon animals at a phone party. <laughs> anyway, but if you miss the phone party, they do have some other things that you can do besides the pool. They did have a bull riding event one day that was freaking hilarious. <laughs> So one thing that was really helpful about us keeping up with the activities is the app that you can download once you get there. It actually works. It's one of the very few apps that work at a resort. Um, the past few resorts, they never work. So you could definitely keep up with what's going on by that app. Now, if that was too much for you and you need some quiet, some peace, they do have a section for you. This section is known as the Golden Pool. This is where the swim up suites are. You could upgrade to this section once you check in, but we chose to just stick with our basic room because we still have access. We could still come over here and enjoy it. So we didn't feel the need to upgrade over here. They do have several waitresses walking around to take food and drink orders. It's just kind of like a little lagoon. Um, I liked that you had more shade over here if you want to come take a nap versus the main pool where finding shade is a little bit harder. They do have lots of palapas here that you can just go right under. The wildlife here is amazing. I felt like we've seen more animals on this side than over at the main pool, probably because all the music is scaring them away. Now, if you're over at the Golden Pool, definitely keep your eye out for Mr. Kevin. If you're lucky enough to see him, he is a beautiful iguana, huge, huge in size. We were lucky enough to see Kevin, but didn't have our phones on us at the time. So these photos are from a photographer on the Valentine Facebook group page. Well, let's talk about the beach. The now, beach here was actually not bad at all. They did have a little bit of seaweed or as they call it in Mexico, sargasm, but it really wasn't too bad. They were keeping it clean every morning. Some days were worse than others, but we really didn't find it to be a problem at all. I will say if you're super worried about the sargasm situation, then it's probably best not to travel in summertime because that tends to be the worst season for it. Normally anything past October, November up till March, you see very little to no seaweed, sargasm, whatever you want to call it. Now I want to make sure I mention the seating situation on the beach. There are bali beds that are in a certain section right as you walk down from the pool bar that you can rent. I believe they just went up on the price for renting these, so you'll definitely need to check the website to find out the exact price. But they do have free palapas with chairs. You just have to walk a little bit further down. Uh, they do have some guys who come and sell some things on the beach. This time, one of my friends that I met here got some really nice bags for a very great price. So they've got everything from parasailing to jet skis. So it's nice that they have these right off of the beach. So if you don't want to travel away from the resort, you can just do that right here. Now let's talk about one of my favorite things from this resort, the food. The food here is definitely five stars. They didn't lie about that. There's so much to choose from. So I'm going to break it down from breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, coffee shops, all that kind of stuff. Mari Terra was our absolute favorite place to eat for breakfast and lunch. It was right next to the ocean. The food was spectacular. They had lots of options. Now you can also go over to the buffet for breakfast, which is towards the main lobby. It was not bad, but it definitely was not my favorite. I thought you could get almost the same thing um, as you could by the ocean at Mari Terra, but I thought the food was better cooked over there versus the buffet. They do have lots of options here. I don't wanna say it's bad, it just wasn't our favorite. Again, the buffet is only open for breakfast and lunch. 
Now, another place for lunch was the food truck right next to the main pool. They had two food trucks, one on each side of the pool, which I thought was amazing because people were able to get seated and eat very quickly. It didn't take very long to get your food. It was fabulous. And then this is the lunch that we would eat beside the ocean at Maritara. Best spring rolls ever. I'll show you these and just, there they are. There they are. You have to try them if you go here, guys. Like, they are fabulous. My husband got this pork tenderloin that he was obsessed with. I love the shrimp cocktail. I mean, everything there was just so tasty and good. Moving on, I just wanted to show the coffee shop real quick because some people might want to stop here for lunch or breakfast. They have a huge list to choose from, more than any other resort I've ever been to. They also have yummy donuts. They have gelato. They have just everything you could want in a bakery in a coffee shop. I'm so happy that they had this because that is one of my number one things I look for when choosing a resort. I want a coffee shop that I can just pop into whenever I want a quick bite. Now moving on to dinner, here's a look at all the restaurants that they have. All cart restaurants, no buffet. We went to three out of all of these restaurants because we ate at two of them twice. They were just the French and the Asian cuisine was so good. We just went back there twice. I wish we could have tried more but i'll talk about that in just a second i showed a picture of my husband with his pants and shoes you are required men to wear long pants and dress shoes um, there was actually some wearing hey dudes which my husband wished he would have brought but most of the restaurants did require that unfortunately he was not super happy about that he also could not wear his hat in the restaurant so he was super sad about that as well so the first night we always usually hit up the Japanese. We didn't sit at the hibachi tables at all. You do need to put reservations in if you want to sit at the cooking tables, but we love to just sit at tables or go to the sushi bar. Everything here was fabulous. We ended up coming back the second time we did sit at the sushi bar. Everything was fabulous here. I'm going to say that word probably a hundred times in this video, but it was great. It was yummy. It was delicious. Nothing more to really say. Just look at these pictures. Some nights we did have to wait since you don't really make reservations for these restaurants um, and that was totally fine. Typically if you're going to go around the 6, 7 o'clock time, it's going to be busy. If you go a little later, not too bad. We did hit up the Mediterranean and everything was really delicious. It was very Italian to me, which is kind of similar I'm told, so I learned something new on this trip. Then we hit up the French restaurant. We ate here twice. Definitely one of our favorites. Super fancy. They made Ty take off his hat again. He's super self-conscious about that. But you could pick your wine from a little iPad. They had so many delicious options here. We tried the ratatouille, and as you can see, we thoroughly enjoyed it. It was fabulous. And then another thing I would recommend is the French onion soup. <laughs> Probably the next favorite food that I ate on this trip other than those spring rolls I talked about earlier, the French onion soup was to die for. <laughs> Shit's horrible. It's horrible. Horrible. Yeah. Emptying that. Mm -hmm. Muy bueno. Voila! <laughs> looks great. The desserts here were also really, really yummy. My husband got the Alaskan souffle and this was so neat to watch. We have, I've seen this done like on TV and stuff on cooking shows, but never actually in person. And it tasted so good. I got the chocolate mousse one night. That was amazing too. If you need some suggestions, definitely recommend those two desserts. Another neat thing that they had set up outside the courtyard at night was a churro truck. I believe they had caramel and vanilla. They did not have chocolate, but it was still really yummy. It was out here every single night we were here. So I thought that was a neat little addition. Now let's move on to the nightlife. The Valentine definitely has several options for nightlife. They have shows like I just showed you. Every single night there was something different. They have a jazz band right outside in the courtyard. Then the DJ comes on around 11, I believe which we really enjoyed. I'm a big dancer, so that's always my favorite. The 
this is where we mingled and met so many fun people. Shout out to our friends from Alabama and over East Texas. We had such a great time meeting you all. <laughs> they also have a sports bar, which I thought was really neat. You come in and play pool, darts, cards. We also waited here a little bit before our reservations were ready for dinners. They also have a cigar in hookah lounge, which I thought was really cool. The only other hookah lounge we've seen was over at Moon Palace. We didn't partake in this at all this time. I was kind of sad about that, but my husband usually gets pretty choked up with his asthma, so we avoided that this time. Just when you thought this resort had everything, they have one more surprise over here at Don Miguel and it is a martini bar with some small snacks that they bring you. Very, very nice. There was a piano player. They had tons of cocktails. My favorite was the lemon drop martinis and the mini beer shots. Those were super yummy. So for the last thing I wanna talk about are the rooms at this resort. Now we just got the basic junior deluxe suite. We didn't upgrade to a swim out or an ocean view. One little negative I have to say is we had to get dropped off with lots of people when going to our room. So we were having to wait as each person was being dropped off to their room with our luggage. So it took a while to get to our room. We've never had to be shuttled with other people. Usually they just take us and our own luggage and we go straight to our room. So that was the only negative I have to say that could possibly be improved. That way you're not waiting 30 minutes on a hot golf cart. But again, not a big deal. So moving on, we were in building number four, Don Alfonso. It was in a really great location of the resort. The elevator was not ever working very good, so we just completely skipped that without taking chances. The resort style of the rooms definitely reminded me um, of Barcelo or Ibero Star with the little courtyard in between the rooms. We were on the second floor, so just a quick little room tour. This is, again, just the basic room that you can get. And it was nice and large. It was a little outdated for kind of a five-star resort, I thought, but it was still very clean, very nice. The shower was good pressure. The hot water worked, it was a little small. But other than that, my only complaint was there was not a double vanity. There wasn't much storage to store all my stuff that I bring. So I was basically using the tub to hold all my stuff. My husband was so annoyed by all the crap everywhere, but you know, I'm a girl. I like to get dressed up for dinners. So yeah, a little bit more counter space, maybe a double vanity would have been nice, but just a very minor detail. You know, I always give my opinions on these resort reviews. Not everything or everywhere is 100% perfect. The rooms were nice and large. I thought the couch took up a little bit of space, but it was nice. I guess if you want to sit and watch TV, we never did. The balcony had lots of space, I thought, for a basic room. Um, again, we just weren't out here. That's why we just don't feel the need to upgrade because we're really never in our rooms, especially when you're staying at a beautiful property like the Valentine. But it was nice that we did have such a large balcony and nice views to look at. They did always make sure to come by every day and restock our mini fridge. They have cores, they have Dos Equis, um, which are sometimes hard to find at Mexico resorts. So they give you little snacks. I always bring some damp rid, And as you can see, it definitely filled up while we were here. The rooms were not exactly cold. It wasn't bad, but we've definitely had colder rooms. So that is another negative if I have to share any. I loved the location in our room. Right behind me was our building and it was just steps away from the pool. It wasn't far from the lobby. So I thought building four was a perfect location. So that just about wraps up everything with this vlog. We enjoyed our trip so much. We would recommend it to our friends, family, clients. And by when I say clients, I want to informally announce that me and my husband have started a travel business. So in the past, I've never had great experiences with TAs, travel agents, because they try to overprice you. And I've just always done the research myself, but I always have so many of you guys asking for help when booking. So I thought I'll check into it. And here's just one review that we have received. And we've received so much love and support with this new business. So definitely check out our Facebook page. We're not here to price gouge you. We're here to get you the lowest rate possible and to recommend 
really great options for you guys when traveling. We can do beach, we can do mountains. We're definitely not just Mexico travel agents. We can recommend U.S. properties, Dominican Republic, Jamaica, Greece, all destinations. Definitely give us a follow. I'm always posting deals on our Facebook page. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely subscribe and like for more content. And I will see you guys in my next one.